Hi. Welcome back. So uh, with me is uh, Dr. Lam from Hong Kong and Hi. Stefan Bertok from our center, and Katrin and Ilona doing the echo, and Andreas is ready for the case history. Andreas, please go ahead. Our next patient is an 80-year-old female. She was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation in 2012, and anticoagulation with Coumadin was initiated. In February 2013, a thrombus was seen in the LAA, and LAA closure was deferred. She also suffers from hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Her risk scores for stroke include a CHATS risk score of 4, a CHATS VAS score of 3, her bleeding has bled risk score is 2. Her ECG revealed arterial fibrillation with a heart rate of 67 beats per minute, a left axis deviation and a right bundle branch block. The TTE disclosed a normal left ventricular function, a mild aortic regurgitation and a moderate mitral regurgitation. TEE showed no evidence of thrombus and the osteal diameter measured 25 millimeters. That's actually, that's actually pretty frequent that we see thrombus and then the patient is sent home, comes back after some anticoagulation whatsoever and then the thrombus disappears somehow and that was also confirmed in this patient and Ilona and Ankantrin already checked that so there is no uh, recurrence of thrombus. We did the uh, transeptal puncture. This is the fluoro recording of the transeptal. As you see, there was a little bit of resistance and then I turned the... Uh, uh, the needle clockwise and that actually moved the thing through. Here I had uh, some resistance again, then I pulled back and then I was uh, in the left atrium. So now let's look at the uh, TE, please. Anne Katrin, Ilona, could you show what you see? Yeah, we're um, right now just doing some measurements in 3D and in 3D we measured an ostium diameter of 20 millimeters. And um, when you look <coughs> at the 2D images, you can see, um, wait a second. In 135 degree view, we measured um, an ostium diameter of 20.4 millimeters. And in um, 45 degree view, the ostium diameter was 22 and the neck is about 19 millimeters. And it's, um, it looks the same in, in 90 degree view on echo. So here we have an ostium of almost 24 millimeters and the neck is around 20. And as you can see in 3D, the ostium is, it looks to be pretty round, so should be, should be all right. So say again, the maximum diameter you measured of the landing zone of was? Of the landing zone was 20. Okay, and orifice was 24? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So uh, uh, we are going to use the, at least this patient is pre-scheduled kind of for the uh, LifeTech device. And uh, that's a device I, I've used a couple of them and it, it's a really very nice device. The largest experience in the world has Dr. Lam. And so he will, will show us how to use this. But before we do this, we have to enter the uh, appendage with the uh, pigtail catheter. So the sheath is in place. Heparin is given, 10,000. He's introducing now the four French uh, Diagnostic angled pigtail. Okay, remove the wire. Okay, That's actually good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back. Good. Yeah. So you see the androgram on the uh, screen. It's a very strange morphology when you look at the distal appendage. There is an appendage of the appendage, and there's another appendage going up. And uh, we did some measurements there, and there we measured uh, it'd be, it'd be 21. Very easy to do the lariat. Yeah. <laughs> So 21 millimeter diameter, that is, would be our landing zone. Yeah. Okay, so we can uh, uh, go out with the pigtail. The amplugs should be in place. At yeah. Advanced, so I'm more. advancing the amplugs tip wire. All right, that's better. That looks more familiar, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay so the pigtail is out. Have you made decisions about device sizes or? So which size of LifeTech device uh, should we use here? Well, the LifeTech device, uh, basically uh, the sizing strategy is similar to uh, regular ACP. So uh, for 21, uh, mm -hmm. you can either choose uh, plus three to plus five uh, millimeter larger. So <coughs> for this uh, device, uh, you see for this appendage, there's a much room after uh, the, the landing zone. So 
what we different from live text that we want to deploy the device just distal to the landing zone. So if you have plenty of room, after the landing zone, you can sort of slightly oversize your device. So in that case, uh, assume that's 21. So we choose 26 millimeter device. So the sheath is, by the way, only a nine French sheath, yeah. which is a stamp shell smaller than the sheath for the ACP. So uh, the largest uh, device that we have currently is a 36 millimeter device that you only require a 10 French sheath. Yeah. Yeah. For the wire, I see if I can push it further. Rotate a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Now it's out. Now. Yeah. Okay. So no now uh, we advance the sheath to the appendage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can prepare the device. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a 26 millimeter device, and the cover area is then 38, right? That's yeah. the diameter of the umbrella. Okay. Yes. 26. Good. Mm -hmm. So you see, this device consists of an umbrella. And this also has a cover. The umbrella actually was consists of egg frames um, because of the membrane, so you cannot see those individual egg frames. And the, on the edge of the device, you see this is a, on each individual vein, there's tiny hooks, stabilizing hooks at the end. Uh, this has helped the device engage into the appendage. Uh, there are three stabilizing mechanisms for this device. One is due to this stabilizing hooks. One is this uh, individual uh, frames inside. Uh, if you get caught in one of the pectinate muscle, it would be very stable. And of course, you need to choose a slightly oversized device. Uh, by the stenting effect, it will also keep the device stable. The way to prepare this device is just like the usual ASD occluder. So um, basically, you just put the device underwater, and then you just uh, screw on the delivery cable. Okay. Okay. And then you just pull it back uh, to the loader. Yeah. Okay. So the umbrella will sort of uh, fold outside and all the stabilizing uh, hooks will be wrapped inside. So it will not be damaged if you're collapsing this device. So it explains so why uh, you can do multiple recapture uh, in case you have problem with the positioning in the appendage. And then you just flush the device. Uh, make sure the loader is without air. And so I normally would recommend you do a bit of flushing when you introduce this device uh, because sometimes air can go in when you just push the device through the delivery cavity. So now I'm trying to remove the dilator. Okay. And I will also remove the wire as well. Uh, for this uh, device, you don't need to deep seat your cavity because uh, the reason is that uh, when you open an umbrella, you just open it a proximal part of the appendage and then you just uh, push the umbrella in. So although this patient has very funny distal appendage anatomy, I don't think it's relevant uh, if we use this device. I will first make sure there's back beat from the uh, delivery cavity uh, before I introduce the device. So Horst is helping me with the flushing. So I just uh, introduce the device. Okay. Okay. So from the photo, you see there are two marks, uh, radio opaque marks at the distal of the appendage. That's used for calibration. In case you want to measure the diameter of the ostium, you can use it for calibration. But I think uh, we don't need this this time. So you see, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see it. The problem is that the proximal, cine. yeah, we do a cine for you to see. So you see that um, this device actually start to approaching the tip of the delivery cavity, and there's a radio opaque dot at the bottom, uh, at the middle, is separate the distal part, which is the umbrella, and the proximal part, which is the disc. And now we can do an angiogram uh, to see where the tip of cavity is. Okay. Okay, say no? Yeah. Oh, it's still yeah, open. Yeah, I close. I close. So do it again. Same again. Okay, so we are probably too distal uh, mm -hmm. in that case because we don't want to open the umbrella at distal part of the appendage. I will slightly clockwise rotate the sheep and bring it slightly more proximal. 
So clockwise because you're too high in the appendage, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, so okay. So I bring it uh, to more proximal portion of the appendage. Okay. Okay. So we can do another cine here. So this is about the right place. So we can actually uh, let the device roll out. So I will try to deploy the uh, umbrella first. So as I go out, I will do a cine so you can see uh, clearly what happens there. So you see the umbrella start to roll out. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have deployed the umbrella. One more center? Yeah. That's actually the plug, it's not the umbrella. The umbrella comes later. Okay. Okay, so the distal hooks basically. Yeah. Cine? So yeah. Cine. Oh, oh, we have sorry. to close again. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Okay. So you see um, the whole umbrella actually filled uh, the appendage. So uh, you have to make sure all those hooks is actually uh, distal to the circumflex which is about five o'clock, you see the, this tiny indentation that probably is the AV groove. And then from there, I can actually de-sheath to uh, release the disc, mm -hmm. shy. Okay. 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 So, okay. All right. So I do a cine, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I actually bring out the disc. So, um, well, so basically, um, there's no way really to check the compression for this device. So we actually advise you to uh, do a relatively vigo tuck test. If it is stable, then it's okay. But from my impression, this is quite stable. So let's look at the echo around 80 degree view on echo and here it looks pretty good so far we can't see a residual leak in, in color doppler so um just go ahead and have a look at the other views so first of all i'm going to 135 degree view <coughs> Of, uh, erosion of the mitral valve because the disc is touching the mitral valve at the basis. Yeah, we checked this in a uh, four chamber view before we proceed. Yeah. The disc is really pretty large. Yeah. Of course, do you think it comes into the pulmonary veins? So the question from Kevin behind um, me is whether it, uh, it touches mm. the pulmonary vein. Yeah. I'm not concerned about that, but it's yeah. actually a little bit bigger than the pulmonary ridge there. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. But we have definitely to check the mitral valve yes. yeah. and make sure that it does not touch the mitral valve. Although, I mean, whether it harms, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I was actually pointing that same point out. In the other view, you could see that the, that the disc uh, was extending into the pulmonary mm -hmm. vein orifice. And I was just wondering whether um, YY has seen anything like that. Have you seen any um, change in pulmonary inflow? Well, we actually document in every single individual and there's no pulmonary vein obstruction noted so yeah. far. I mean, here it looks pretty good, I think. Yeah. Okay. But from the 2D, you see the mitral valve leaflet insertion. It's actually quite free. Yeah, it's not really yeah. touched. Huh? Yeah. Okay. We see also here, now looking at more views in 2D echo, we see that the device, device is not really touching the mitral valve at all. Yeah. It's just at the ring, right? Yes. Okay, so we can release well, that's it. The other okay. Point. It's overhanging and not t in contact yeah, with it. Exactly. That's the other point. Yeah, exactly. So maybe yeah. we just do a gentle tuck. Just yeah, check. gentle tuck, okay. Okay. I see a tuck test. So we that's see the. Gentle, huh? That's gentle. So uh, how does it look like when you do a rigorous tuck test? Um, <laughs> just to show you the distal <laughs> umbrella actually doesn't uh -huh. doesn't move. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So All we right. can release it. Yeah. So I'm going to release it. <coughs> well, what would be good about this device is it was a a Oops, single sorry. take implant, which is good. Yeah. Because we've had. Uh, so you the see, when I release the device, it seems uh, it moves away a bit from the pulmonary vein. 
Yeah. It's because it's tendency to suck in when I release. Uh, uh, there's no more tension on the cable, pulling tension on the cable, so it just suck in. And it did not move towards the mitral valve, so we are still okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, shall we do an injection at the injection? end? Injection? Did you close it? Yeah. Is it closed? Yeah, yeah. I okay. closed. Sorry. As I was saying, Thinner? this was a okay. single take implant, which is quite a Oops, different to the other uh, devices we've down. seen yeah. Okay. Yeah. demonstrated, all yeah, of whom needed a little bit of, let's say, finesse. Yeah. Okay. And also the sizing uh, is not that important, again. right? One from here, you see there's uh, no touch of pump vein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm. Django is very good for that, isn't it? Yeah. And you're probably aware that the act that this is actually slightly different from the ACP. It's a more cylindrical uh, type of disc instead of flat disc. So it tends to suck in a bit uh, when you release the device. Uh, is the, Simon, is the screw recessed in it? Yeah, the screw is recessed. Okay, okay. look, we're going to move on. Listen, well done, Jan. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Very good. Good. Thank you.